Hi, I hope you're well and that you're having a good day or night, depending on where you are in the world. And today we're going to be planning for June. And this time I went for a lilac theme and I'm going to be using some watercolor since I really enjoyed doing that last month. But I'm starting off with some wood patterned paper that I will be using for the headings and for the name of the month. And I'm going to start off by writing June using a stencil, because if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that my writing is not the best, so for my title pages where I want things to be as neat as possible, I really like to use stencils. And I'm doing that again here. I went for a blue color scheme for my headings using this blue metallic marker because I wanted it to stand out a bit from the purple lilacs that I will be drawing, which you'll see in a little bit. So I'm just doing that here. Next up, I'm using that same wood patterned paper on the right side of the page for my quote. And I wanted to use that as a backing for my quote just because I wanted it to be a little bit more interesting and I wanted it to stand out a little bit more from the page. And also because I wanted to match my June heading. So, this particular quote says, I have laughed more than daffodils and cried more than June. And I know that it's a little melancholy, but I still really liked it and, I don't know, it has the word June in it, so I thought it was appropriate for the month. And it, it does feel kind of like a spring quote, although, as I said, kind of a sad one. I don't know, I liked it, which is why I went for it here. Next up, I'm starting the doodles. And I went for very, very simple doodles this month. As you can see, I'm just starting off with some black fine liner and drawing just the stems and very simple leaves. And I wanted the only colors to be the lilacs and the blues that I'm using for the headings and the titles. So I kept the leaves just black and white and I didn't color anything in because I didn't want to add greens into this spread or any of my other spreads for that matter. And now it's time for the fun part, which is using watercolor to make the doodles come alive and, well, turning them into lilacs, really. And here I'm just using basically dots of three purplish colors in various tones. And I'm starting off with the darkest one. And I don't know if you can tell, but my brush is actually a little bit busted, so it doesn't really have the perfect round pointy shape that you normally would need for good watercoloring, but it actually kind of worked here because it let me create those more uneven smaller dots without too much trouble. So yeah, <laughs> if you have a busted brush, then don't necessarily throw it out, you might be able to use it for something like this. Of course, you can also use markers if you don't have or want to use watercolors or other paints to recreate something like this as well. You could just draw kind of splotchy smaller dots all over your lilac doodles and you're gonna get pretty much the same look. My next step was using my second darkest color, which is also very vivid, but slightly closer to magenta purple color. And I used that to just add some more random dots all over my lilac doodles. And you'll notice that I'm using watercolor in a very sort of saturated way. Um, this is actually fairly decent watercolor, so it does get saturated if you don't add too much water and if you let it sit for a little bit. So I could do that as well here. And my last step for this spread was my final color, which is also the lightest color that I'm going to be using for this setup. And 
And I actually had to wait for the previous layer to dry, so if you notice that things are no longer wet, it's actually because I had to wait like 10 to 15 minutes in between these moments. And the reason I had to do that is because I knew that this color would be going on top of all of the other ones that I've put down, and I didn't want to smear them and create just a giant mess. And this is the color that I'm using to fill in most of the empty space that I had left, but I'm still leaving a few white areas here and there just to make it look more, I don't know, floral, because lilacs have distinct flowers, so I kind of wanted to give that effect by still making it sort of look like they're separate dots to represent those florals. My next spread, I'm starting off with the same white wood paper, and I'm going to be using that for the titles. By the way, this is going to be my habit tracker and my mood tracker spread. So my mood tracker is going to be on the right, and I'm actually going to start with that. And I'm drawing those same lilac doodles again, except this time I'm putting numbers where some of the uh, colored areas would have gone, and I actually forgot to add a legend, but uh, the darkest color would be for the saddest days and the lightest color would be for the happiest days. So I will probably add that in at some point when I start using this mood tracker. But there are also a few areas where I didn't add numbers, and those are the areas that I'm going to color in right now, just to make the spread look a little bit more interesting, well, right now, so that I don't have to wait to, you know, color it in and make it look pretty. And while I'm waiting for the first two colors to dry, because as I said, I don't want to smear things, so before I go in with my lightest purple color, I need to wait for them to dry, I'm going to start working on the habit tracker. And for the habit tracker, I'm using those same calendar stamps that I've been using for quite a while now, and they make making a habit tracker like this so much easier than it would have been drawing them by hand. And honestly, I don't think I would have attempted to draw them by hand because I just don't have the paper for this, she said after spending hours on her bullet journal. I don't know, there are just some things that I don't have the patience for, and this is one of them. So, calendar stamps are a great option if you, like me, don't really want to draw out the calendars by hand. And after I finished all of that, luckily my watercolor was already dry, so I could now go in with my final lightest layer. And I'm just going to do that here. My final touch for the spread was actually just fixing a few small areas where the stamps didn't show up very well, but I didn't go to too much trouble to fix them, I just fixed a few tiny little details. And the next spread is my calendar spread. And normally I make so many mistakes when I put this spread together, but this time I only made a few tiny ones, and I didn't even notice until, well, I started doing this voiceover and I'm kind of staring at them right now, so you'll see what they are in a little bit. This time I'm actually using purple pen for the calendar portion, and usually I just use my black fine liner, but this time, I don't know, I just wanted to mix it up a little bit and use purple instead. So that was kind of fun. Other than that, I kept things pretty simple, and I used my black fine liner for the dates, and I also used my blue marker for the days of the week, which I'm filling in almost at the end. And my last step was 
of course, some more doodles. And I'm just using those to fill in some of the empty spaces around the calendar, but um, I left a little bit of space at the bottom because I knew that I would be adding some washi tape to this spread later on, and to all of my other spreads, by the way, in case you were wondering. And if I knew that I wasn't going to be doing that, I would probably have added another doodle there. So you can always just fill that in with a doodle if you don't want to add washi tape to your spreads, and if you're going to be creating something similar. As for the doodles themselves, I'm pretty much filling them in the same way that I've been doing for the previous spreads. I'm using the same three purple colors and the same sort of dot-like, circular-like shapes for the florals. Well, for the small flowers that kind of make up each lilac doodle. Next up we have the final spread, which is my tasks and monthly review spread. Again, I'm using the same wood paper for the titles, and I'm again writing them in the same metallic blue marker. And this time I'm using just a few lilac doodles, just to fill in some of the empty spaces that haven't been filled in by, well, the heading on the left, since it's much smaller than the one on the right. And because I have two doodles on the left side of the spread, I also wanted to add two, but you know, two joined lilac doodles to the bottom of the right spread, just to balance things out. And again, I'm coloring them in in the same way that I've been doing for my previous spreads, with the same three purple colors. Actually, this time I forgot to add the leaves to the stems of the lilacs, so I decided to do that closer to the end when I remembered to do that. And now I'm going to show you a flip through of all of the spreads as they look without washi tape, which I will be adding after this. But I just wanted to show you how they look now because I think that this is still, I don't know, pretty nice and I would have been happy with them like this as well. But if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that washi tape is my favorite form of stationery, so I really like to add that in just to make the spreads look a little bit more interesting. And we are going to do that now! And we're starting off with some black and white grid washi tape on the title page, and a little bit of this sort of bluish purplish floral tape that kind of matches the lilac doodles a little bit. And next up I'm using this really really wide dragonfly tape, which also has blue and purple colors, again, to match that same color scheme. And I'm putting that in to the bottom right corner, just because there was a bit of an empty space there. For the next spread, I'm starting off with some much thinner washi tape and I'm adding the thin blue washi tape to the bottom of the habit tracker, and I'm also adding a little bit of purple washi tape and that same blue washi tape on top of that to the left-hand side of that same spread, just because the uh, mood tracker has the doodles, so I wanted to decorate the habit tracker a little bit more. But I still wanted to add a little bit of washi tape to the mood tracker as well, and I'm just doing that in a few of the empty spaces with some grid washi tape and some more of that bluish purplish floral washi tape. The next spread I'm starting off by adding some more of that same black and white washi tape 
the grid kind, to the bottom of the spread. And I'm also adding a little bit of that white dragonfly washi tape to the empty space where I said I would have added a doodle if I hadn't known that I would be adding washi tape. So yeah, now I'm filling that in. And my final touch for the spread was actually just a few small strips of purple washi tape with the black and white grid washi tape on top, just to fill in some of the uh, empty spaces and make the spread look a little bit more interesting. And for the final spread, I went with adding a little bit more of that same grid and purple washi tape to the right hand side. I don't really know why, I just felt like that area could use some washi tape. And then I wanted to balance out the washi tape that I added there by adding some more washi tape to the left hand side, so I added that in the bottom left corner. And that was it! Now it's time for the final flip through of all of the spreads that I've been setting up. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed setting up these spreads and I actually really like how they came out. They feel very appropriate for spring to me and I really enjoyed them. So I hope that you liked them as well, but if you didn't, that's okay too. I would still like to hear your opinion in the comments below. I hope that you have an amazing month Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!